Today, we make shit small. Is this Pim Parker experiment, remember? Uh, pin bar for test number number 11. Oh, this is uh, pin bar for test number 38. Come on! Done it! Grabbed it! Hey Dave, made any more progress on the. Uh... Dave? Alex! Alex, I did it! Alex! Dave? Alex! Ah, God, we're never tired at all. Alex! Alex, what are you doing? Alex! Alex! Hi there, I'm Pete, and this is Breakdown, the show where we recreate stuff from your favourite TV shows and movies and then break them down for you. As you can see from the title, today we're tackling the Ant Man shrinking effects. Last time we showed you a couple of different ways to pull off an effect, but this time we decided to just show you the easiest. And if you'd like to know how the complex method works and grab yourself some footage, you can follow along, but stick around until the end. Stick around until the end. Without further ado, let's dive right in. As always, the VFX begins on set, where you shoot your actor on a green screen, making sure the lighting makes sense for your background. We position the lights as bright and high above the actor as we could to emulate the way light lands on small objects. All right. Now we're going to remap the timings of the character to make it seem like he's in the air for the duration of the fall. Take your footage into a compositor and key it. If you don't know how to key, subscribe for a tutorial from us in the near future on exactly how to do that. If you shot your footage in slow motion like us, go to Interpret Main and change your frame rate to 23.976. Next, drop your character into a composition and add the time warp or twitch to effect. Change the speed to 50 or 25 depending on your shot. Hit the keyframe stopwatch on the speed and then hit U on the keyboard. Scroll through the timeline to where his knees begin to buckle as he lands. Add a keyframe, then play with the timer a little to get it just right. Next, add another keyframe and change the speed to real time. For us, that's 250 because we shot it in slow mo. Cool! So now we're going to animate the fall to the table along with a camera move so it looks like our tiny camera operator is following Ant-Man's movements. Control R Command if you're on Mac and Shift C to pre-comp the layer and move all attributes. Change the comp resolution to fit the entire clip and then close the comp. Next hit A on the keyboard and keyframe the anchor point to stay level with his feet. Hit S and keyframe his scale from 150 to 19%. Add your background plate and fit it to the comp width. Now play with the position keyframes of your actor and background to simulate following him from the air to the table. This will take some fidgeting to get just right. Once happy with that, it's time to move on. The next step is to create the signature Ant-Man Echo. Hit Ctrl D or Command if you're on Mac to duplicate your character. Zero out your keyframes and drop the layer below the master layer. Right click and go to Time Freeze Frame. Hit clip the layer to the background to parent it to that layer and now it will be stuck to the background throughout the shot. Repeat this step several times, freezing at different points in your timeline to create the echo effect. Once that's done, trim each layer so that it's only visible after the point that is frozen. And now cycle through the blending modes to find the one that works for your scene. We use Lighten. Add brightness and contrast to each layer and keyframe it so that it organically fades away and use the opacity to then take it completely out. Excellent! Now the effect is really starting to come together. In order to really bring it into the scene, we're going to add shadows and reflection on the table. Start by pre company character layer again. Now shy all of your echo layers by selecting a little nosy man on each clip and then hitting the same icon for the entire comp. Now those layers are still visible, but you have more room to work in the timeline. Now duplicate your character layer and rename it reflection. Duplicate it again and name it contact shadow. Turn off your contact shadow and select your reflection layer I go into transform and fill it vertical. Now position your reflection below the character. Press P on your keyboard and keyframe the position of the reflection to take it completely away from the frame at the start. Now pre comp your reflection and move it to the bottom of the stack. Draw a mask along your reflection and set the feather into around 80 and then invert the mask. Add a fast blur and change the blurriness to around 20. Turn on your contact shadow and then mask around the areas where he's touching the ground and set the mask type to add. Add the fill effect to the layer and make it black. Move the layer down so that it's sticking out from under the character and add a fast blur. 
you change the blow range to 3 and hit T on the keyboard and change the opacity to 64. And that is the effect finish. But no way are we stopping there. We're going to add some final details to really lock this all in tight straight after this. This episode is brought to you by the Tempered Pixel Shirt Store. Brand new film and TV themed shirts available. Favorites include Fix It On Set, Render Time, and Roto Monkey. Buy yours now at the first link in the video description. Alright, let's jump right back in. Select all of your layers and check the little motion blur icon. With them all selected, pre-compose them again. Now add the real camera shape preset from the effects pro, to which there'll be a link in the blog post for more information on this. At the start, keyframe the shape amount from 3 to 0.5. Hit U on the keyboard to bring up your keyframes. Keyframe both the rotation and shake amount until you get something that looks organic and natural. This could take a while, but the goal is to create something that both locks in all of your effects and adds emphasis to the landing. There we have it! Without the need for any camera tracking or 3D applications, you've successfully recreated the Ant-Man shrinking effect. And as I mentioned earlier in the episode, if you'd like to read up on some more of these theories behind these visual effects, how the Hollywood approach works and even grab some free footage to use however you like, you can find the link to our blog post in the video description. But, above all else, make sure to shoot us links to your versions of this effect over on Twitter, we'd love to see what they look like, and let us know what we should break down next in the comments below. Don't forget to, to uh, like this video and subscribe for more breakdowns and some bonus breakdowns in the coming weeks. Next time we'll be rebirthing some older VFX, but until then, please take care.